from ABC News. This is Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Chris Fury. For Americans, it may be cold comfort that gasoline prices in London, Frankfurt, and Hong Kong all range well over $5 a gallon. Or that the Energy Department now says gas prices here may have peaked for the year. After all, complaining about those prices is as American as having a big car in the driveway. And the question every year about this time is, who's responsible? Gas prices do seem to go up like clockwork at the start of every summer. Big oil is always a fat target. The major energy companies are gushing buckets of money. Politicians are a convenient scapegoat. So is an auto industry that fights tougher mileage standards and, of course, the terrorists who've disrupted oil supplies in the Middle East. But it all comes down to supply and demand. And yes, China and India are now burning up more fuel than ever. But we Americans, only 5% of the world's population, still consume 25% of its oil. And we are famous for wanting it all. Big gas-guzzling SUVs like the one in my garage, relatively low taxes, and the unfettered freedom to blame higher prices on somebody else. Correspondent Robert Krulwich explains. Just when you thought it could get worse and worse, it got better. One month ago, gas prices reached their peak, and now, bit by bit, they're going down. Even sabotage in Iraq last week did not buck the trend. Pipelines there may be burning, but oil prices and gas prices are still ebbing. And even as they head down, it does make one wonder what made prices jump so high in the first place. And the timing? Springtime? Just when a whole lot of us were about to jump into our cars and go someplace, why do prices rise just when Americans need gas, year after year? It's not uh, always the case that you see uh, gasoline prices uh, increase at this time of year. It's often the case, but it's uh, certainly not always the case. Well, it's often enough that in my imagination anyway, and I'm not alone, a lot of folks find these springtime increases suspicious. This is no accident. It always goes up in the summer. Are they surprised that people drive in the summer? Somebody is making money on this deal. I don't know who. The oil companies. The cartel. Tax collectors. Middle Easterners. Somebody. I don't know who, but somebody is. So who does do well when gas prices go up? Who's smiling the most <laughs> broadly? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a good year for the uh, oil industry in terms of profitability. But what does that mean exactly? If you look at the numbers a little more closely, for every dollar that you pay for gas, about half goes to the oil company that pumped the oil. Yeah. Another quarter or so goes to taxes. Interestingly, though, yeah. when gas prices go up in America, the tax stays fixed. So your government does not benefit when gas prices go up. We don't. And the rest of your dollar, roughly a quarter, so it's not that much, is split between the refinery mm. and the super tanker and the pipeline and the trucking company and the oil traders and the investors on Wall Street and all of them. Which suggests that the big winners here are first countries and companies that pump oil, then refineries, and then what? I'm a little reluctant to, to, to rank them one, two, or three, uh, but uh, certainly crude oil production is certainly a profitable business when prices are this high. But I, I, know, I know what you're after, and I'm just a little bit leery of, you know, saying... Uh, well, here's what I'm after. Like, everybody's wandering around thinking, so I'm giving them an extra dollar. So who's getting the biggest piece of my money? Who should I be mad at? <laughs> Who should you be mad at? Well, you should be mad at the market. Uh, because the most important reason why prices are high is we're simply consuming more oil at a faster rate than we, than we ever have before. And who knew? It was only a few months ago, in March, when OPEC ministers met and forecast a sluggish world economy. This spring, they predicted, the world would not be very thirsty for oil. But they were wrong. The last nine months in the U.S. have recorded the strongest climate of economic growth in about 20 years. That's the American story, and it's also the, the story with China. We knew China was growing strong, but what was uh, surprising is over the last year, they're using more oil to generate power. They're using more oil to produce 
good for the Chinese market and also for export. Demand from China and America came on so strong, the oil industry suddenly had a problem. They had pumped a certain amount of oil, but with America much thirstier than expected, and China much thirstier than expected, and India much thirstier than expected, and Southeast Asia much thirstier, demand exceeded available supply. And once folks start competing for something, its price goes up. This surge in demand, which hadn't been anticipated a year ago, that is the most fundamental reason why we have high uh, oil prices and consequently why we have high gasoline prices. What we are doing now is try to do the best we can. So to solve the problem, the OPEC ministers very quickly met again on June 3rd and announced that they would start producing more oil. We want to supply the world with, with, with enough oils. You know. But now the question must be asked, are we over the hump? Our price is going to keep falling to a buck seventy-five, maybe a dollar fifty this summer. How low can they go? Well, one argument says they can't go too low for a very simple reason. Fear. Think about where we get our oil. Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Venezuela, Russia, where the country's top oil executive was arrested and driven off to jail, and Iraq. Oil is a risky business, pumped increasingly in very dangerous places. If by some chance, you know, Saudi Arabia was not able to give the world oil, guess what? There's nobody else that can replace them. You will think $40 a barrel is cheap. A fact well known to the folks who trade oil futures in New York City. They are so wired, so attuned to the news, so anxious, that they know at any moment a pipeline or a major refinery could be hit by terrorists. So they're thinking, hey, I want to buy a barrel of oil today. And if everybody thinks that, that tends to increase the price of crude oil. So much so that fear all by itself has added, says Jim, 8 to $10 to the world price of crude oil. But interestingly, drivers in America are not fearful. And even with gas prices sky high, this May in America, more SUVs and pickups and vans were sold than last May, 11% more. On average, I sell about 500,000 F-150s a year. Great, this feels fantastic. Every time somebody buys a new SUV, they're committing to buy a lot of gas in the foreseeable future. <laughs> Meanwhile, in China, automobile sales have doubled and then doubled again. Streets that used to be filled with bicycles are now clogged with cars. So, if worldwide demand for gasoline is up and fear is up, that could keep prices up for the rest of the year. So that is the bad news. But there is the possibility that instead of dropping just a little, prices could drop a lot. All it takes is four changes happening more or less simultaneously in the coming months, and they could happen. And just so you know, they are. First, the Saudis may pump enough extra oil that prices will keep dropping. Second, speculators on Wall Street could begin to place bets that push the price of oil down even further. Third, Americans may turn away from SUVs. The signs are there. The auto companies have begun to offer bigger and bigger discounts to get people to buy. And finally, the Chinese economy is very likely to slow down, which means less demand for oil at least for the next year. If all those changes happen, and they certainly could, then instead of spending, oh, two dollars and change for a gallon of gas, next fall we could be spending a buck fifty, unless something happens at a major oil refinery, and then all bets are off. So for the American consumer, what price is just right for a gallon of gas? How about for a gallon of coffee? Part two of Robert Krulwich's report when we come back. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Cisco Systems. There is nothing like the rising price of gasoline to stoke the anger of the American consumer. So what exactly is the right, or at least the reasonable price, for a gallon of gas? Once again, Robert Krulwich. 
Once upon a time, 23 years ago, because of the Iran-Iraq war, the average price of a gallon of gasoline in America was $1.42. Adjusted for inflation, that's $3 a gallon. That's a lot. 23 years later, it's almost $2, even higher here in New York City. And when we asked you, are you happy with $2, you said... Too much. A little too much. Too much. So we wondered, what do you think is a fair and reasonable price for a gallon of gasoline? We conducted a national poll, and you told us that you were most comfortable when the price of gasoline reached $1.42 a gallon. Meaning, above this price, you feel you're spending too much. Below this price, you're getting a bargain. But when you think about it, a buck forty-two a gallon is awfully low, considering the other gallons in your life and the life, really, of any ordinary American. Hi. Hello. If you, sir, over a week drink a gallon of bottled water... You want me to... Oh, go ahead. Drink it right now. Using the Coca-Cola product Dasani as our price guide, that would cost you $4.50 a gallon. Huh. Yeah. Or maybe you like orange juice. If it's Tropicana you like, maybe with some pulp... Actually, I like the kind with... Whatever, whatever Tropicana you oh, like. Okay. You will pay $6.58 a gallon for orange juice. Ah. Yeah. Or coffee. A gallon of regular Starbucks coffee. A gallon? I know. We're going to do this by the cup, and then we're going to add it up to a gallon, okay? That would cost you $17.92 a gallon. I know. It's shocking. And since it's getting warmer, you warm? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you might prefer an iced cold frappuccino. Frappuccinos cost $35.20 a gallon. Ha! Unbelievable, I know. And yet the very people who happily pay outlandish prices for beverages get upset when they have to pay two bucks for a gallon of gas. It's too high. It's really uh, unbelievable. It's ridiculous, you know? Go figure. I'm Robert Krulwich for Nightline in New York.